Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded and the recording will be posted publicly. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now, I'd like to turn the call over to Ms. Yara McSweeney. Yara, you may begin. Thank you, Greg. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Data Access and cross tabulation Using MDAT. My name is Yara McSweeney, and I am a Program Analyst at the Census Bureau. I want to thank you for joining us today at the Back to Data Basics webinar series. This webinar was created by the Census Academy here at the Census Bureau. You can register for any of the webinars by visiting census.gov slash academy. Before I introduce today's speaker, let's just go over a few housekeeping items. As I mentioned earlier, this webinar is being recorded. For your convenience, it will be posted in our Census Academy site within 30 business days. We'll post all supplemental materials, including the PowerPoint slides. In terms of how to ask questions during the webinar, you could submit your written questions using the Q&A panel, which is at the bottom center or the right side of your WebEx screen. Please take a moment to locate that now. Once you've found the Q&A panel, make sure you choose all panelists from the drop-down menu. This will ensure we see your question. Also, we ask that you do not include any personal or business identifiable information with your questions. My colleagues, David Craker and Elizabeth Gaskin, will be monitoring the Q&A panel. As time allows, they will answer your questions directly to the, to the Q&A panel, or they will read them out loud to our presenter after her presentation. For any questions that are not answered, feel free to contact us at the contact information we'll provide later. Now let's talk about the chat panel. Look for it next to the Q&A panel. Keep that chat panel open because this is where we will provide you helpful links and other resources. Keep in mind, you won't be able to respond to the chat. Chat is just for us to send us your links, including our evaluation. As you know, we are in a virtual environment and sometimes technical difficulties might occur. If you are having issues, try a different browser or consider logging out and coming back into the session. Lastly, throughout the webinar, a link where you can tell us how we did today will be provided in the chat. We are very interested in hearing what you have to say. Okay, so now with all of those administrative items out of the way, I now like to introduce today's speaker, Noemi Mendez. Thanks again for being here, Noemi. The floor is yours. Thank you, everyone. Can you hear me okay? So today, uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be talking about how to access and cross-tabulate data using MDAT, uh, which stands for Micro Data Access Tool. Uh, this is a 101, I will say. So um, later on on Census Academy, you can view other webinars that have been done. They might be for the higher skilled, but I just kind of want to give everyone an overview and then do a couple examples on how this tool works. So a little bit about um, what I do and what our data dissemination uh, specialists do. We work with the public um, to answer questions and help find data. So we have on Census Academy, which there's the URL. You can request trainings. You can receive our data gems, which are short how-to videos. You can access our courses and our webinars. You can register there and then view um, ones that have been already recorded. So this is me. My name is Noemi Mendez. I've been with the Census Bureau for the past 19 years. I specialize in working with grant writers, GIS users, business and educational institutions, and I attended Syracuse University and City University of New York Hunter College. And I also um, teach GIS and data visualization courses at Johns Hopkins, and I was awarded the U.S. Commerce Department's Bronze Medal in 2020. So let's go into the objectives for this afternoon. We're, I'm going to teach you about census data, the American Community Survey, and we're gonna briefly go over um, CPS. 
um, because both of those data sets are on MDAT, and those are the only two data sets that are available. If you're familiar with data.census.gov, that one has many, many more data sets. We're going to talk about geography. We're going to talk about Pumas. You may have not heard of these before, so we're going to go over what they are. And then I'm going to use the MDAT tool to access uh, data. So here's my table of contents. First, we'll go over data sources, then switch into geography, and then finally do the demo. Okay, so data sources. So what's available in the MDAT tool? First, we have the American Community Survey. This is our biggest survey that we do. So it's an ongoing survey that provides information on a yearly basis about our nation and its people. And the information from the survey generates data that helps determine how more than $675 billion in federal and state funds, uh, funds are distributed every year. Then we have the current population survey. So CPS is sponsored jointly by the U.S. Census Bureau and the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. This is the primary source of labor force statistics for the population in the United States. Just an overview of ACS. This is an annual sample of about 3.5 million addresses. The content's created to meet the needs of federal gov government agencies. The data is collected by mailed questionnaire in person and online. The geographic levels go from the nation down to the block group. And the data is released in the fall. So the one year is in the fall and the five year comes out in the winter. And then you can access this uh, data via many different tools on our census website. So here's just a graph that kind of gives you a visual representation of the different types of topics that are in the ACS. And there's a lot of different topics. So you have your sex, age, race, Hispanic origin, housing units on the demographic. We have a lot of information on housing. So occupancy, values, utilities. Then we have the social area, which is um, data from education, marital status, fertility, grandparents, et cetera. And then we have the economic side that has to do with income, employment, occupation, commuting to work. So it's a very substantial survey. CPS is a little bit different. So CPS is administered again by the Census Bureau using a probability selected sample of about 60,000 occupied housing units. The field work is conducted during the calendar week that includes the 19th of the month. The questions refer to activities during the prior week, the week that includes the 12th of the month. Households from all 50 states and the District of Columbia are in the survey for four consecutive months. Then they're out of it for eight months and then return for another four months before they leave the sample permanently. So this design ensures a high degree of continuity from one month to the next, as well as over the year. The 484 sample scheme has the added benefit of allowing the constant replenishment of the sample without excessive burden to respondents. So uh, if you follow the news, the first week of the month, you get the unemployment rate, whether it's gone up or gone down. That's one of the major products that comes out from the CPS. Okay. Some other stuff about the CPS, again, it's the primary source of labor force statistics. It collects data for a variety of other studies that keep the nation informed of the economic and social well-being of its people. It adds a supplemental questions to the monthly basic CPS questions. One of them is what's called the March supplement, where you get a lot of information about poverty levels. That's, that's one that a lot of uh, researchers use is that March supplement, but there's other supplements that have other types of questions. So they vet, these supplements vary from month to month, and they cover a wide variety of topics, such as child support, volunteerism, health insurance, and school enrollment. Okay, what is public use microdata? So public use microdata is anonymized, so there's no personally identifiable information 
and it's edited to protect confidentiality. Uh, there's, so there are individual responses that are tabulated and then weighted, and it's accessible through the MDAT tool, which I'm going to show you, also our application programming interface, our API, and you can also download it through FTP sites. So a little bit about tabulated data versus what it's an MDAT. For those of you that are data.synthes.gov users, you're working with already tabulated data, right? So for instance, at this table shows in 2019 in Maryland, there were approximately 121,160 males that worked in computer and mathematical operations, occupations, I'm sorry. While with microdata, you can go in and do some tabulations where you, you look at the edited survey. So for instance, you can look at these, uh, this data item, for instance, this serial number, this individual, this male in Maryland is a web developer. So it kind of breaks down what you can find in those um, aggregated tables. So data.census.gov provides you pre-tabulated tables uh, it has more geographic detail and less topic detail, but the data is more precise on data.census.gov. While uh, the public use file in MDAT provides you the ability to create custom tables, and that is a big benefit for MDAT. You cannot do that on data.census.gov. So it also gives you more topic detail, but less geographic detail, okay? Because there's only a hand set of geographies that you can get the data for. So what is in uh, the MDAT tool? So it has a few different estimates for the ACS. You can get the one-year POM sample and the vintages, uh, 2004 to 19. You could also get the POM sample for Puerto Rico. And then for the five years, again, there's a public use micro sample. And then there's a Puerto Rico micro sample for the five year. CPS, um, th th like I said, there's a lot of different things that are on here. You have the March supplement, you have you know, computer and internet use, um, fertility, the food security supplement. So if you're interested in those topics, you can get this information on CPS, school enrollment, um, volunteering, the voting supplement, which is usually always in the news. So that's where that data has come from if you're reading a story that uses these types of topics and mention CPS. Okay, we're going to switch gears and talk about geography, which is my favorite topic. So for those of you um, who maybe are beginners to census geography or need a refresher, we have data all the way from the nation down to the block level, right? That's the geo. We don't have information. We have geography, right? So let's say we have Colorado. Within Colorado, we have, there's all these counties that have uh, broken up. Then within those counties, we have these census tracts, and then we have census blocks, uh, block groups in the track, and then your block. So your block is kind of like your beginning point from there. Now. Depending on the topic and the data source that you're using, you can get certain data down to certain levels. So in um, data.census.gov, you can get data down to the block group. That's the smallest level of geography. So I'm just going to reiterate this. I always teach this when I'm working with data users. So a block, um, they're not defined by population. Um, they're kind of bound by these geographic um, kind of like outlines, right? So let's say like the block that you're in right now is defined. It could be defined by the streets that surround it that make the boundaries. There might be a railroad line that's used. There might be a water feature. And every 10 years, the census recreates these right before the next census. And we work, um, and we work with local planning agencies to give them the information and they review what the work the census has done. And this is very important for us to get these boundaries correct because these uh, geographies are locked in place for the next 10 years, okay? So again, with the block, um, the smallest geographic level at which data are ever released. So you can get decennial census data, but you can't get ACS data down to the block level. So if you piece um, these 
uh, blocks together, you get what's called a block group. And these are um, created through either a population threshold or a housing unit threshold. And then those put together give you census tracts, and those also have certain thresholds that create those. So if one thing to remember, if you're using ACS data uh, and you're looking at a, a, like a timeline for particular topics, be aware that sometimes those tracks may have split or um, they either split or they come together because they need to keep those thresholds. So on the geography website, there is a document that you can use that tells you what those blocks were previously and what they are now. Okay. So what are public use microdata areas or PUMAs? These are defined areas and they have 100,000 plus population. And the Census Bureau works with what's called a state data center. These are our official partners for each of the states in Puerto Rico that work with us to create these geographies. So PUMAs or collections of PUMAs can be used to identify most cities of 100,000 plus and many metro areas, but not all. They're identified by a unique five digit code and that's unique within each state. They nest within states and they cover the entire nation. So water wall coverage. And again, these are defined after each decennial census and census tracts and counties are the building blocks for Pumas. So to select, I'm going to show you how to select the Pumas in a microdata access, and we're actually going to be using, I believe, DC as one of the examples. So here's a visual of what the Pumas look like, and then how to select them. And we'll go through that. There's a tab called Select Geographies, and then you can see what's available, and then you can go ahead and select your state, um, and then select the individual geographies that make up uh, what you're looking for. Tiger web is something I want to show kind of quickly because I find that this is a very good visualization tool if you want to look at the different types of geography, geography that the Census Bureau has, okay? So let's see if I can do this. Uh, I'm going to escape out of here and go to, excuse me, the geography program. Now, if someone... One of the moderators, if you can't see my screen, just let me know. So this is under um, our geography program, that the Census Bureau's geography division. And it has all sorts of inf information about geography. So if you go under featured, you want to go under interactive maps. And there's a whole bunch of different tools that the census has created over the many years, looking at different uh, geographies, different programs, and different tools. But if you scroll down to the bottom, you're looking for Tiger Web. So Tiger stands for Topologically Integrated Geographic Encoding and Referencing System. This is what we called our GIS files. They came from a system called Tiger. So for those of us who have been around for a long time, you may remember Tiger Lines, okay? There's a bunch of different applications. Just click on this. They have ones for particular types. There's one for decennial census, economic census. We're going to use the basic Tiger Web, and it tells you the vintages of the geography that are in here. So you know you're on the right page when you see this. So you'll see here on the left is all these different types of geography, and you just click on them to see which you want. I'm going to go ahead and use an address in Philadelphia. It's where the free library is. Hold on. This doesn't work. I'll just, you can always just zoom in. Okay. So just to kind of start zooming out. I'm going to go to my layers and I'm going to go ahead and select Pumas, urban growth areas, and Zictas. I just want the Pumas. So I'm going to click on that. So you can see how quickly it renders. So uh, right now we're looking at all the Pumas for the Philadelphia area. 
So if I was interested in selecting all, all the Pumas, actually, let me turn these off because these are showing the zip codes. There we go. So yeah, and that's another thing too, you can add other layers. So if you wanna look at what we call uh, zip code tabulation areas, they're all there, these are the zip codes, but I'm just interested in the Pumas. So you can just go in here, just zoom out a little bit so you can get an understanding of what the geography looks like for you know what you're studying so that's just a quick and dirty for that let me go back to my presentation okay and the that's the link and then the link should show up in the chat uh, if you want to check out this tool okay so here's just a screenshot of what i just showed you for the puma for philadelphia the pumas for philadelphia uh, this link will also be in the chat. So we have these really great um, books that kind of give you everything you ever wanted to know about our, all, all of our data, all of our geography. So if you want more information on the Pumas and how to use them with ACS, check out this guidebook. It's, it's fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the MDAT demo in a sec. So these are the two examples I'm going to do. The first one is I'm gonna show you how to select your variables and your geographies, how to limit your universe, how to define your table and then save your results, okay? The second one is we're gonna do what's called a recode where we're gonna go in and look at age data and make, um, we're gonna select the, a bound or a, a selection of ages that we want the data for and then we're going to use um, pumas for this one so the first example i'm going to use the state of new york and then the second one we're going to drill down and use pumas okay so first we're going to go to the mdat tool this is the address and i'm going to show you how to do that okay so let's go live to the tool So I have it right here, okay? It's, it's in beta form. So if you're on this homepage, you know um, exactly you're in the right place. So let's go through our first example. So we're gonna look at work from home by detailed industry, professional scientific management and administrative and waste management services in New York based on the American Community Survey. So the first thing we wanna do when you're at this tool is we're gonna choose our data set and our vintage, okay? So I'm gonna leave the default. We're gonna use the one year estimates, the public use micro data sample. And then for our year, we're gonna use 2019. But I'm gonna show you from the pull down all the things that are on here. So we have the ACS data and then all those CPS ones that I showed you earlier. And then depending on the, the uh, data you're using, that's gonna dictate what vintages are available. So for the one year, the latest one is the 2019, and then all the way down to 2004. So once you have that set, we're gonna click next. So let's search for variables. But before that, I just kind of want to go over the different steps we're going to take. We're going to select our variables, then select geographies. We're going to look at our data card, um, table layout, and then finally how to download and, and save the information. So we're to search for variables, We're going to use the search box below to find what it is that we're interested in. There is a document on our site, and um, I'll try to remember to get the link to what to decipher what all these different codes mean, but here you'll have the label. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cheat a little bit. We're gonna use JWTRNS, and that means means of transportation to work. Okay, so that's the one we want. I'm gonna hit the check and it's gonna put that in our data cart. 
The next one I want to look for, and you see this 515 variables in this table. So that's why we want to filter out. We're going to use INDP, and this is our industry code. And then again, make sure that you check your box to put it in your card. Okay, so it tells you here how many variables you've selected. So once we're satisfied and we make sure that's what we want to do, let's go select our geography. So click on our tab. So we have regions, and these are census regions. We have met these divisions. We have our states, and then we have our, our Pumas. So that's all that there is here. If you use data.census.gov, you can go from the nation down to the block group level. But because this um, data set has individual responses, they only, and they're aggregated, they only go down to a certain level of geography. So let's click on state and scroll down to New York and click that. Okay, very easy. So we're gonna call what's we're gonna limit our universe. We're gonna look at our data sets that we've selected and select specifically what it is that we're looking for. So we're gonna click on data cart. So this is telling us here and double check here that what you want is what's in here, okay? So we have the journey to work and then our um, responses for our industry. So we click the data cart tab. We're going to click this guy here, the means of transportation to work. We're going to uncheck the box for include in universe. So we're going to um, go ahead and just limit our universe. We're going to scroll down and check the box for worked from home. So I just want to show you what, what are the, uh, what's under here. So how do people get to work? We have car, truck, or van, buses, subway, commuter trains, light rail, ferry boat, taxi cab, motorcycle. Bicycle, walked, worked from home, or whatever the other method is. We're going to check the box worked from home. Okay, so that's what we want for this particular variable. Next, we're going to click on this one here. We're going to uncheck the box for including universe. So here we're going to limit our universe. We're gonna check the boxes. Well, I'll show you quickly. There's a lot of different types here. So it's a pretty long mining, natural gas. These are the industries you know, that people work in. Bakeries, fiber, you know, footwear. So there's a lot here. So this is why we wanna go and just select for that particular item. We want professional, professional scientific, management, administrative, and waste services. So the codes for those are 7270 to 7790. Let's go down. Okay. So 7270, so you see it's professional. That's what the PRF is, stands for. We're just gonna go ahead and select. This will take a little moment. We're gonna go down to 7790. So I'm just gonna go ahead and know where to end, okay? <clears throat> So you see, this is very varied. You have everything from waste management to landscaping to veterinary services, advertising, computer design. It's, it's, a, it's a really big group to be kind of jumbled together for this one. 
So you want to conf uh, confirm your selections and then click the table layout. So double check and make sure you have everything that you need. I'm going to click table layout. So now we're going to view the variable placement in our default table layout. So columns and rows, uh, variables will be shown in this, this table. So by default, the tables providing data for the population who worked from home in the columns with the geography, which is New York, and detailed industries in the rows. So what we're going to do is we are going to edit our table layout. So how do we do that? We're going to move the selected geography to not on table. So what we need to do is click, hold, and drag the selected geographies on the left side of the page down to the not on table heading. Let me just scroll down a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay, this is going to restrict the universe to not, uh, only include data for New York without showing the label for New York in the table. Okay. Let's see. Sometimes it's a little difficult to go ahead and just click um, correctly how to do this. So you're going to click. Hold and move this. You kind of see how it's sort of selected. It's like a light gray. Okay. Okay. Very quickly. So now we have that. Then, uh, let's see, the next move is we're gonna move the selected geography. So again, you're going to click, hold, and drag the selected geographies on the left side of the page down to the not on table heading. Okay, so now this is gonna restrict the universe to only include data for New York without showing the label. Okay, Actually, I think that's already in place for us. Okay. So let's double check that we did this correctly. So we want to confirm the table layout in the lower right. So if we click view table, let's see what we get. Sometimes um, you'll get the option. Well, let me just show this in the beginning. So this is telling us, here's our custom table, the data set that we're using, and you can go ahead and let's say you want to keep this universe, but you want to change the vintages. You can do that there. Um, we have our geography. Here, sometimes you'll be using a data where you can change from the count to the average. That would be here. This is telling us the geography with all the codes that we selected, right? So the S, so we're going to look for the estimated number of individuals who worked. And so this is our universe. So here's the total for the, each of the different um, professional services. This is the number of people who worked in these individual services, but worked from home. So for instance, the estimated number of individuals in legal services who worked at home is 8,363. So you can just kind of go through and see, according to this survey, the total number of people who worked in these services who worked from home for tw in the 2019 ACS data, okay? So once you are satisfied with this, how do we go ahead and get this information? You can click the download slash share. And then you want to click on download table view and then click download. You can also uh, export the CSV, but we're going to go, this is what we're doing here. So let's see.
Okay, so here's my Excel. I'm just gonna go ahead and just pull these out a little bit so you can read this. Okay, so here's our table right here, right? We have our, our geography and we have all of the different um, professional services, okay? Uh, I will say for GIS users, the if, for those of us that have used data.census.gov, you, you know, you can download the data that has the geo IDs that you can put into your GIS system. This doesn't have that. So I will put that as a caveat. Um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to do mapping, but I just kind I always kind of let GIS users know um, what you can and can't do with the, with the data. Okay. So that is our first example. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. So let's go and do our second example. I'm going to go back to, I don't know, this is going to take me back to that side. Okay. So for our next example, we're going to do what's called a recode. And we're going to select Pumas this time. So what we're going to do is we are going to use the five-year ACS for uh, 2020, and we want information on uninsured population 40 and over in DC. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to select our data set. So we're going to switch from the one-year to the five-year right here, five-year public use microsample. And then our vintage, it defaults to 2020. So it's defaulting to the latest uh, data that's available here. Okay, so now this is what I want. I'm gonna click next. Uh -oh. It's not working. Give me a sec. I'm gonna refresh and see if that does anything. Oh, okay. Five years. Oh, here we go. A little bit of a delay. Okay. So what do we do here? We're going to search for variables again. So we're going to search for health insurance. And that code is H-I-C-O-V. Health insurance coverage recode. So we're going to click on that. So the next thing we want to look at ages, and that's A G E P H. So we're going to go ahead and uh, add these variables with their in our data cart. So the one that we're going to be recoding is the age. Okay. 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 So here is under age. You'll see that the whole table goes from uh, zero to ninety-nine. Okay. Next thing we are going to do is select our geographies. So here we're going to do Pumas. So we're gonna go ahead and go to public use micro area. We're going to go down to the District of Columbia. And I want all of these. So we have West, North, Northeast, East and Central. So next, once we have all of these, we're going to go to our data cart. So we're going to create our custom group, and this is done in about two steps. So we're going to click um, Create Custom Group.
we're going to click into the label and then type a label for the first category we're going to create. So we want to create a category of 0 to 39. So we're going to check these boxes and then edit our range. So we're going to change this from 99 to 39 and then save our group. So we have this category here. Um, so it's, it's going to appear um, not elsewhere classified. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let me see this. I'm going to go ahead and click edit group. I'm sorry, I just want to double check something here. So we're going to go ahead and change the name. That's what I needed to do. We're going to rename this 40 plus and then save group. Okay, that's what we have an age group of 40 plus and then an age group under 40. So now we are going to click on table layout. Okay, so again, this is very similar to what we saw earlier. On the left-hand side, we have columns, uh, rows, and not on table. So the values in the table cell options area is when variables are shown here, you have more options to choose from in the drop down menu. Columns and rows means uh, these are the variables that are going to be shown on the table. So by default, the table is providing uh, data for health insurance in the columns and then geography are in rows and then the not on table. By default, the AGEP, uh, AGEP recoding is not on the table. And it does not restrict the universe because the recode includes um, ages for all people. So we're going to go ahead and edit the table layout. So we're going to drag, I'm um, going to move the geography to the columns. So click, hold, and drag selected geographies on the left hand side to the columns heading. again. Then we're going to move the HICOV and the uh, recoding to rows. This will add categories in our table rows for the population by health insurance status. This is giving me some difficulty. There we go. Okay. So we're going to confirm our table layout. So if it looks good, you're going to view table on the bottom right. Okay. So we have our geographies and we have with health insurance and without, with and without health insurance. So click view table. Oh, wait a minute. I think I did something wrong here. Let me go back. Give me one sec. So, so we'll put our geographies back. Okay. Select the geographies, click hold. So 
Sorry, everyone. Hmm. Okay. So you see how I'm, well, one good thing about this is, as you can see, it, as I'm clicking on it, you can kind of see how it changes from area to area. Hmm. All right. Let's go ahead and do the table and see what it looks like. So this is telling us by particular geographies, how many people did or didn't have health insurance. So here is for the district, for the West Puma, the North Puma, the Northeast Puma, the East, and then the Central Puma. How many people had health insurance and how many people did not health insurance by the average age? So I believe that's fine, that, that's the answer. So I think that's all that I have. Um, again, here you can go ahead and download, your, download and share, download your table. And as I showed earlier, it has, um, you can open it up into your Excel table. So I think that's all that I have. One, I wanna do a couple more things. Uh, let's go into our key takeaways. So what did we take away from today's presentation? That MDAT is the tool you're going to use for micro data, okay? It's the only tool that we have that allows you to look at some of the micro data. There's only two data sources on here. You have the American Community Survey and CPS. So the advantages of using MDAT is you get more of the details about the topic, but the caveat is you're gonna get less geographic detail. You can create custom tables, which you cannot do on our other uh, tools, such as data.census.gov. And then Census Academy has many more videos on MDAT that go into other examples. So if you kind of want to look at and, and see what else you can do with the tool, um, there's two or three more very good webinars that are available on our website. So finally, how to get in touch with us. Uh, this is my contact information here. So if you wanted to um, email me, um, you're free to do so and I can answer your questions. Uh, we also have a general mailbox. So if, uh, let's say, myself or uh, one of the other DDSs is not available, you can always go ahead and just put it into our general mailbox, which is census.askdata at census.gov, or you can call our Ask Data number. So if you have a question about a data product, if you want to know the answer uh, to maybe something that you're studying, or if you want to go ahead and request someone to do a presentation for your group, feel free to contact us this way as well. And then our URL is the U.S. Census Bureau. And one of the really great things is you can subscribe um, on census.gov academy, and you can get every time we release a data item, like one of our tools or anything like that, you'll get a notice when the page is updated, okay? So thank you for being here today. Um, that's what all that I have. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. And then our Census Academy team, uh, are there any questions or anything that I can answer while I'm here? No, I mean, this is David. I, there's a lot of questions uh, okay. I couldn't answer. I think we, we actually will, we have the people who registered and we try to get back to them with you know, through email to their questions. But can I ask a couple of questions that are kind of recurring? Uh, somebody did ask, is there a place that has like a list of all those codes that they use in MDAT? Is there a link or something to those I somewhere? I would check the um, manual that I posted the link to. If that's not available, um, I think it's in there. We can look and see on our site uh, where the document has that has what those variables mean and then what they kind of basic plain language explanation is, yeah. Okay, um, I think I see the manual here. Let me put that um, up there. Okay, and then um, 
couple other questions. Somebody want to know, is there a way to see urban, the difference between urban and rural? I don't think you can do that in MDAT, but no. I don't um, know, Tiger Web? Yeah, you can look at Tiger Web. If you just want to look at the particular geography, you can look at Tiger Web and it'll give you. So with the Census Bureau, we define urban areas and then the balance is rural. So you'll see the urban areas and then what is not in an urban geography is by default rural. Um, and you can get data for urban rural on um, data.census.gov, I believe. Okay. All right. Let me see. Uh, there are a lot of other questions here. Um, hold on. Um, we don't. Yeah. I'm um, you want to know could they select multiple states at one time? I think so, correct? In MDAT? I believe so, yes. Yeah, just like I yeah. selected um, more than one Puma. It just has to be okay. the same type of geography, yes. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm looking really quickly here. Oh, somebody asked, is it possible to download more than one time period at a time? I don't believe, well, um, no, because each vintage is separated on the tool, so you would have to go back on the tool and you can kind of check. I think I still have it open. You can go back under, I believe it's the, uh, the table layout, the download. There is a place here where I saw that you can go ahead and switch your vintages. Oh, so here we go. Yeah, I think you just have to do it here. You just sort of flip back and forth. Mm -hmm. okay. I believe, okay. I might be wrong, but. We can figure, we can get that answer out too for people if that's something that they want to know more about. Okay. Uh, and there's another question here that kind of I would like to know too. Um, so if you don't really know the variable name, he, he's asking, can you just sort of, is there a way to filter it out to figure out what it is in MDAT? Like, um, can I type health insurance in the filter by topic? That's right. This one doesn't. Well, I think it's because our, our data card has all this stuff. So let's trash some of these. Let's go back to our variables. Now we have the entire universe. This one doesn't have health insurance. Well, that's not true. And filter by topic. Let me go back to the beginning. Uh huh. So we're going to use the five year. Oh, we don't want Puerto Rico. In 2020. So this one doesn't have health insurance, but as you see, as I start hitting the letters on the it's alphabet. Kind of doing it, right? Yeah, yeah it kind of does it for you, yeah. Okay. That well, that's good to know. I didn't, you know, I I'm glad to know that. Okay. Um, and if you click on the details, it tells you what's exam what exactly is um, how it's broken down. So this okay. is for grades. You, yep. Okay. All right. And you did say the link. There's a link you put up there. I think I just put up in the Q and A, uh, or in the chat. It has the variables and our link to variables or something. Did you tell me that? I, it's to the um, the book that talks about the, the tool. So uh -huh. we, if it's not there, we can figure out where um, where it would be on our site. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I'm looking really quick. We only have a few more minutes, so uh, most of our questions about okay. Oh. Okay. I okay. I think we're. I'm going to stop with these questions now. We'll just have to send them back um, mm -hmm. in email. So, so thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Noemi, and thank you, David and Elizabeth as well. So this was a great presentation. I want to thank everyone who played a role in today's webinar. And of course, thank you, the audience, for spending the time with us today. 
So please make sure you take a moment to fill out the evaluation by following the link provided in the chat. We hope that you let us know not only what we can improve on, but what you enjoy from the session. You can look out for the recording and the PowerPoint presentation on Census Academy uh, or by visiting census.gov slash academy. And we will also like to remind you of our next webinar in this series, which is your tribal nation by the numbers, access in American Indian and Alaska Native statistics, uh, which take place on Tuesday, September 27 at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this is going to bring us to a close. We thank you again, and we hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you, everyone. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect at this time.